Now, all of this, uh, for the last several videos I made, I've lectured and said that uh, fatty acids cannot uh, contribute carbons to gluconeogenesis, but I've kind of hinted at the possibility of an exception to that rule. And this except, the exception to that rule is odd-numbered fatty acids. So odd-chain fatty acids can contribute to gluconeogenesis. What happens, let's just look at this. Uh, whenever you have a 5-carbon fatty acid, so anything more than 5 carbons, it's going to go through the beta oxidation that we showed in the previous video uh, until it gets down to a 5-carbon uh, acyl-CoA. So you remember, let's say if it was 9 carbons, it would go through beta oxidation and remove 2, and then go through beta oxidation again and remove 2 more, and then you get down to this 5-carbon acyl-CoA. This 5-carbon acyl-CoA will undergo uh, beta oxidation to produce acetyl-CoA and propionyl-CoA. Uh, propionyl and so propionyl-CoA with bicarbonate and biotin and ATP will produce D-methylmalonyl, and then the D-methylmalonyl will um, be converted into L-methylmalonyl-CoA, and that will be converted into succinyl CoA. Now, succinyl CoA is an is a TCA cycle intermediate, and the thing is, whenever you go through the TCA cycle, so let's start with oxaloacetate and uh, acetyl CoA, and these two combine. Uh, the two carbons from acetyl CoA are eventually lost as CO2. This is why acetyl CoA cannot uh, contribute to um, oxaloacetate or gluconeogenesis because both of its carbons are lost and then you come over here and you get to succinyl CoA or succinate which uh, happens after the two carbons are lost so anytime you add more succinate to the TCA cycle it's going to create more oxaloacetate which can be converted to phosphenyl pyruvate and go up through gluconeogenesis